Monolithic architecture is a traditional software design approach where all components of an application are tightly integrated into a single unit. This method simplifies initial development and deployment, particularly for small applications. However, as applications grow, scaling a single component often requires scaling the entire system. Additionally, even minor modifications may necessitate rebuilding, testing and redeploying the entire application. This approach can also lead to technology lock-in, making it difficult to adopt new technologies without extensive refactoring. A failure in one component can potentially bring down the entire system. Additionally, the growing complexity of monolithic code bases increases the cognitive load on developers, making collaboration and maintenance more challenging. Service-oriented architecture or SOA emerged as a way to address the limitations of monoliths by breaking down applications into loosely coupled services that communicate over a network. Consider a banking application. In a monolithic architecture, all functionalities like account management, transfers, loan processing, etc. would be tightly coupled. With SOA, each of these functionalities would be a separate service, communicating with each other through standard protocols like SOAP or REST. Services can be independently developed, deployed, and scaled, allowing for greater agility and responsiveness to changing business needs. However, SOA's distributed nature introduces complexities. In many SOA applications, the ESP or Enterprise Service Bus served as a central hub for message routing, transformation, and orchestration. The ESP itself became a complex piece of middleware, requiring specialized skills to configure and maintain. A failure in the ESP disrupted communication between services, potentially causing system-wide outages. Furthermore, in a distributed system, services need to find each other dynamically, often requiring a service registry or discovery mechanism. And this adds complexity in terms of maintaining an up-to-date registry and ensuring services can find each other reliably. Furthermore, communication over a network in SOA introduced latency compared to the in-process communication that happens within a monolith. Modular monolith emerged as a way to address the limitations of traditional monolithic architectures while avoiding some of the complexities introduced by SOA. The modular monolith with its single deployment unit and in-process communication offered a simpler operational model. Communication between services in SOA relied on network calls, which introduced latency compared to the in-process calls within a monolith. The modular monolith, by keeping all the modules within the same process, eliminated this network overhead. Also, maintaining data consistency across multiple services in SOA was complex, often requiring distributed transactions or eventual consistency models. The modular monolith simplified data management by keeping all the data within a single database and transaction boundary. A smaller development team with limited experience in distributed systems might find it easier to adopt a modular monolith than a fully fledged SOA. Organizations with large legacy monolith applications might gradually introduce modularity through a modular monolith as a stepping stone towards microservices in the future. Speaking of microservices, Microservices architecture further refined the concept of SOA. Instead of enterprise-wide scope, it focused on smaller, even more fine-grained services, each responsible for a specific business capability. This allowed for greater flexibility and scalability. Both SOA and microservices share a common goal, decomposing large applications into smaller, more manageable components. But while SOA aimed for loose coupling, Shared databases and complex ESP configurations led to hidden dependencies. Microservices with their independent databases and direct communications enforce stricter boundaries and promote loose coupling. SOS reliance on ESP for communication and orchestration introduced unnecessary complexity, which became a bottleneck. Microservices communicate directly, typically using simpler protocols, reducing the complexity. Now, Micro frontends are an extension of the microservices principles to the frontend world. In microservices, these are backend services, while in micro frontends, they are UI components. Microservices, however, typically have a high degree of isolation than micro frontends, as they are completely independent systems with their own runtimes and data stores. Micro frontends, on the other hand, while modular, often need to share some resources and collaborate to create a cohesive user interface. So while microservices prioritize team autonomy, micro frontend teams often need to collaborate more closely to ensure consistency in the overall user experience. 
This might involve sharing design guidelines, UI components, or even collaborating on shared libraries. Now, I have explained the concept of micro frontends in depth from scratch with clear cut examples. It is quite interesting concept. Even if you are a backend engineer, I would highly encourage you to check it out. Now, microservices and micro frontends may not be suitable for startups and smaller teams due to the high initial investment required for the infrastructure tooling and expertise. Composable architecture builds upon the principles of microservices, but it takes a broader view, encompassing various types of components beyond just microservices. Microservices are still fundamental building block in composable architecture handling specific business capabilities. The composable architecture leverages APIs extensively to integrate different components, whether they are microservices, packaged business capabilities, or legacy systems. Older monolithic applications can be integrated into composable architecture as long as they expose their functionalities through APIs. This allows organizations to gradually modernize their systems without requiring a complete rewrite. In addition to API, composable architecture also use event-driven communication patterns, where components react to events and trigger actions in other components. PBCs or packaged business capabilities are pre-built software components that encapsulate business functions such as a dedicated search engine or a content management system. They can also represent any well-defined business capability, such as shopping cart or order management. PPCs encapsulate their data to maintain autonomy and reduce dependencies on other components. By owning their data, PPCs can ensure data consistency and integrity within their domain of responsibilities. So PPCs expose APIs that allow other components to read or write data in a controlled and secure manner. So they can be easily integrated into composable architecture through APIs. Now, while APIs are the primary mechanism for integrating PPCs into composable architecture, PPCs can also leverage event-driven architecture or EDA and data streaming for communication and interaction. PPCs can also publish events to notify other components of changes in their data. Many online retailers and marketplaces leverage PPCs to handle payment processing, inventory management, and customer support. Financial industries can harness the power of PPCs for risk management, fraud reduction, and more. So PPCs allow them to focus on their core business functionalities without investing heavily in developing these functionalities from scratch. The key difference between microservices and PPCs is that microservices are an architectural style that define how we break down the application into services. These services can communicate through APIs. Each can be developed, deployed, and scaled independently. However, PPCs are custom combinations of certain microservices that work together to carry out a specific business function. So a microservice might be responsible for handling user registration, another one for login, and maybe a third microservice for managing user profiles. However, a PPC might take our entire user authentication flow. Composable architecture is an architecture style that emphasizes building applications by assembling loosely coupled reusable components. These components can be PPCs, microservices, APIs, or other software modules. So PPCs provide the building blocks, while composable architecture provide the framework for assembling those blocks into cohesive and functional solutions. In recent years, the tooling landscape for composable architecture has evolved significantly, making it more accessible and easier to implement. Mature API management platforms like Apigee, Kong, and MuleSoft provided robust features for designing, publishing, and securing APIs. Cloud providers like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud offer managed services for container orchestration, for example, Kubernetes, serverless computing, and API gateways, further simplifying the deployment and scaling of composable systems. Observability tools like Datadog and New Relic provide deep insights into the performance and behavior of distributed systems helping to identify and resolve issues quickly. Now, speaking of cost, developing microservices from scratch typically requires more engineering resources and time compared to integrating a pre-built components. Leveraging pre-built components or PBCs and services can significantly reduce development time and effort, leading to lower development cost. And you don't need to build everything from scratch, saving on engineering resources and time to market. However, Using third-party systems can often involve subscription fees, which can also add up over time. With careful planning, the right tools, and a willingness to invest in learning, 
composable architecture can be a powerful enabler for both startups and large enterprises, allowing them to build agile, scalable, and future-proof applications.